Basically, you tape along the seams of your hat and transfer it to the paper to make patterns. Sew the pieces together and you have a new hat. In a nutshell. This only works on hats that are sewn together, not the felt kind that is molded into shape. You can tell that your hat is sewn together because there are seams usually at the top, center back, and somewhere on the brim. You probably want to avoid using this technique if your hat is made of tweed, velvet, anything that might get ruined by masking tapes, or if it's too precious. I use masking tapes of two different widths. First, I take the skinny masking tape and use it to outline one of the pieces. Tape along the center back seam so that one edge of the masking tape is touching the seam. I start on the straight seam because it's going to be an anchor when I pull off the tapes. I use a lot of short pieces and overlap them instead of using one long piece and try to get it to bend along a curved seam. I find that it usually works better this way. I only taped one side of the side crown panel as I'm going to cut out the side crown on fold at the center front. When I finish taping the outline, I proceed to fill the inside with wide masking tape. If you only have skinny masking tape, you can do this with the skinny tape, but it takes a little longer with skinny tape and white tapes feel a little more stable when you get to the peeling off part. Overlap the tapes about a quarter of an inch so that the tapes stick with each other and don't fall apart when transferring to the paper. Once I fill all the void with masking tapes, I use a sharpie to make notes on the tape panel itself. Mark center front. where the seam of the brim is and center back. Prepare the paper that's bigger than the tape panel before start peeling. Then start peeling off the tape panel at the corner of the first tape which should be at the bottom of all the tapes. Take your time so that the tapes don't fall apart. Lay it down on the paper and smooth it out starting from the middle. The tape panel will not be completely flat since the hat itself has been shaped and stretched after sewn together. Just smooth out the wrinkles as much as possible to get the flat piece for now. We'll deal with the shaping later. Repeat the process on the crown top. Don't forget to mark the center back and the center front. On the brim, I decided to skip the outlining with the skinny tape. I took one long piece of the wide masking tape and made small tucks at the inner curve to follow the shape.
When I was transferring the tape panel to the paper, I made sure to leave some space between pieces so that I can add the seam allowances later. The tape panels might not be symmetrical because of the copying process or the hat might have been out of shape, so correct any distortion at this point. Here are all the pattern pieces I got from this taping method. I added a quarter inch seam allowances on the outer corner of brims and the crown top and half inch seam allowances everywhere else. To make my new hat, I used cotton twill fabric and non-woven interfacing I had in my stash. I'm not going into details about how to put the hat together in this video, but if you're interested, please check out my video about making fedora hat. The only thing I did differently from the other video is that I added rows of stitching to the brim. The hat is put together but not finished yet. If you look at the original hat, there is a slight curve to the side of the crown. And my hat is pretty much straight up and down. My head also lacks shaping on the top. The top should be shaped like this to get the fedora look. Once the shaping is there, these hats should look pretty much identical. You could try to shape your hat by using tailor's hem and steam from your iron, but I have to say it's really tricky. Hat makers use wooden head blocks to shape the hats, and you can find them in online shops like Etsy, but they are pretty pricey. So my next best thing is bath towels. I fold the bath towel several times along the long edge and roll it up to get this round shape. Adjust the side so it's slightly bigger than the hat, but small enough so that you can stretch the hat over it. Shape the hat and the towel into the shape you like and steam with your iron or steamer. Don't take the head off the towel just yet. Wait until the hat is completely cooled down. Shape the brim like the original hat. Use plenty of steam and let it cool down. It's a bit random, but I weaved this ribbon a while ago and didn't know what to use it for, so it stayed on the loom. I think I finally found a good use for it. And here is the finished hat. I think my hand-woven ribbon worked great with it. I ended up adding fusible hair canvas facing to the crown, and I bound the seams with cotton twill tape. I used regular grosgrain tape for the sizing ribbon. Everything came from my stash and I feel pretty good about using what I already had. The hat took a little bit of shaping probably because of the hair canvas I added. I could use stiffening spray to make the hat keep its shape better, but stiffening sprays are pretty toxic so I want to avoid it as much as possible. If you know of any hat shaping method that's budget and environmental friendly, please let me know. If you want to draft your own fedora hat pattern from scratch and sew the hat, please check out my other video. Thank you so much for sticking around this far. If you like this video, please hit the like button and leave a comment before you leave. And I hope to see you in my future videos. Bye!